I'm rebuilding this motor for my wife for her CRV. I just got everything back from the machine shop. This is the B20 B4 motor. They honed the cylinders for me. Deep clean, batted it in a hot tank. They hot tanked the head and did a valve job on it. And they micro polished the crankshaft for me. And all the machine work cost me right at $300. And this is going to be with that eBay rebuild video. I've got all the eBay rebuild parts right here. And I got $235 in the rebuild. I know y'all love watching stuff be put back together and done on a budget. So let's do this engine rebuild. So I took the two biggest O-rings that were in this pack that came with. Okay, so in this rebuild kit, it came with king bearings. I don't know if they're name brand or not, but I got the bearings and I got the thrust washers. I got thrust washers. So upon inspection of this, you can tell from these bearings, see how this notch is right in the middle? And this notch is offset off to the left side and it's got more of an oil group. If you look, this one right here, in the block is offset to the left. Look at the cap, it's in the center. So make sure you match those up. Take your bearing, start it on this side, and get it where your finger has it where it holds it, or holds it into place right here. And then push, push straight down. and then push straight down until it seats all the way. And do that with all of them. I've got some uh, plastic gauge to check my clearances. Out of here, we have that little green stuff. We're gonna cut off just a little, we're gonna rip off just a little piece and put it along each crank journal. All right, so you can see I put a strip along each area. So now we can put our main caps on and do not turn the crankshaft. And we're going to torque them down to specs. All right, so I'm going to actually put a little bit of oil. So I've looked this up. The main carrying cap bolts for the B20, you have 18 foot first, then 56 foot pounds next. I always start in the middle and work your way out. Okay, so I just pulled off the main caps. So here's our plastic gauge 
uh, checker. So you can see the different millimeter ratings and the different inch ratings on one side. So starting with number one, what you're gonna do is fold your piece of paper in half and you go off of whichever one that looks like is the closest. So 0.38 right there looks pretty close on number one, 0.015 inch. So number two, it looks like it's a bow and a half. Quick tip, whenever you're using plastic gauge, try to go and find an area where you can actually get in there easier. This right here is right in the way. Number three, at the two thou. Number four, it's about a thou and a half. Number five, yep, so it's about a thou and a half as well. So now I'm gonna remove the crankshaft. I'm actually gonna put assembly lube down in there now that we know what our ratings are. attempt to heat up this connecting rod so I've got the wrist pins down in dry ice I've got my piston set up the way I want it I have the arrow facing up and I got the PR4 I'm gonna have it facing up as well and that's gonna go back in that way I'm gonna actually take one of those out and attempt to assemble this very quickly Well, first attempt was not too good, guys. So I only got it that far in there and it should have went all the way. Very unconventional method, but I got it in there. unconventional method of beating these in I messed up and I actually hit a little bit off center with my socket and uh, it gouged this so I actually took a pencil grinder and I actually just took and hit the low spot and just enough where this has and I don't have any play left or right up and down and then it kind of pushed this up just a little bit and so I actually took me a, a file a little small hand file and just kind of hit that back down just enough for where the gaps open up where I can put a set of rings back in here. Okay, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start one of the piston rings. I'm just going to kind of walk it, walk it on its way down. All the way down to the bottom. I'm going to take the oiling ring. You can kind of see these. See how the ends are up there? I got them facing up. And just slide that on around. So there's those two. Let's get one, the last top one. So same thing. I'm just going to walk them around. All the way down. And you'll fit it on top. Just like that. Now I'm not clocking these just yet. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the ring on. So the second ring, that's your scraper ring. If you notice, but you can see this dimple right here. That's going to be facing up. Same thing. I'm going to walk it on down. Get down to the second groove. Number one, top groove. I'm looking at this one and I don't see any markings. So I don't think it's going to matter which way you install this one. We got all of our piston rings in here. So now we have to clock them. So I'm gonna clock these rings with the arrow on the piston facing to the right. I'm gonna have the first top ring is gonna be in the middle of the exhaust. The second ring is gonna be 180 around. The top oiling ring and the bottom oiling ring I'm going to have them 90 degrees apart, but they're going to be offset in this direction. And the spacer, I'm going to have it halfway in between lined up with the uh, second ring. There's the first one. Yeah, there's the second one. So now that I got all the rings lined up, I'm going to take my ring compressor and I'm going to slide it over. I'm going to lube that up and lube. So I got it as tight as tight as I can with this tool. But Go down until you feel a little stop. And then give that thing as much of a tighten as you can. So I tapped the uh, piston down until I got it lined up on this crankshaft. Remember your punch marks. I got, I got my punch marks on this side. We're actually gonna try to check this with plastic gauge. We're gonna get us a little strip and you're gonna to wanna to lay it as straight as possible. Don't put any lube on it. <laughs> get it to see. From in the fast lane, the connecting rod nuts, you first torque them to 14 foot pounds, then 23 foot pounds. All right, 14 and in inch pounds would be 168.
stops Motion got me all faded My heart Got me going all crazy And I Won't be walking away Yeah, yeah. New York in the sunshine I'm a fool, yeah I got my love blind And fool, yeah I got my heart out And it's covered in gold Like moonlight I'm a Hollywood And it's cool, yeah Cause you know it's good for me after you torque this back down is we want to make sure that the rotating assembly still rotates without any binding. So remember to rotate this in counterclockwise rotation. Everything feels good right now. So that's good. Put this one at the lowest point. guys so here's the old rear main seal okay so it's slowly coming up so I'm just taking the screwdriver you're gonna make sure you don't gouge your your mating surface all right and then now we're gonna we're gonna clean inside of here and on the back we're gonna clean this face gonna take some scotch bright gonna go around and clean this try to clean out inside of here as well see how it was before it's got that black in there all right so I cleaned up that real nice install a rear main seal now to install this what we're gonna do is put a layer of oil on both sides so that this will slip back in. So I started it by hand already and got it square all the way around. I'm just going just a little bit at a time. It's gotta be past where this, there's a chamfer. So if you look at this, you can see the chamfer now around here I got it seated all the way around when installing the rear main get you some uh, Honda bond how I had my bolts labeled when I took it apart I got everything labeled here's my rear main bolts put a thin layer of Honda bond around the mating surface and then when using Honda bond you apply it and you let it sit for a couple minutes so that it gets tacky. Give me a little bit of oil. And I'm just gonna run it on the inside of that seal. So when you slide it over the crankshaft, it slides right on. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this on here. Notice how it had the dowel pins. Make sure your seal looks good. Line everything up with your dowel pins. And then Pop it on, Your 10 millimeters in here. I got this evergreen oil pump from the eBay kit. Pull it out. You see how this thing has this flat in here. 
and it turns. It's got two notches and a flat. Well, if you look at your crankshaft, notice that it's got that flat on it with a flat on both sides. You have to get that those those lined up on there or else it won't slide on. Get you some oil, put you some oil around. Same deal with this. We're gonna put some oil on here. And then we're gonna put some Honda Bond. We're also gonna make sure we don't forget to put our oil pump uh, seal on right there. So don't forget to put that on. We're gonna go ahead and install this. So when installing, make sure your oil pump lines up on the flats. Then you gotta make sure it goes up over your seal. All right, you'll hear it drop in over. And then check your front seal, make sure it's slid on nice. Just the dowel pin. Oil pump bolts, right here. So your long bolts. Okay, so we're gonna do the outside, then this top one, then this outside, this one, and this one right here. Wipe off. Oh, you can see where this hole is. That's where your dipstick tube will come through. You got to put that on first before you can put your pickup tube. So on the oil pan gasket, you see where it's got these uh, lines on one side and no lines on the other side. If you look at it, or you got six on this side and you got nine on this side. On this side, it's where the nine's gonna go. This, see how this kind of curves off just a little bit? So here's where the nine's at the top and it curves off. So this, um, with the two lips, it's actually going to be facing down against the oil pan surface so the flat the flat surface is actually going to be facing the top of your block okay so i'm actually going to go ahead and install the oil pan gasket on our motor first and then now while we still have the honda bond on we can slide that directly on let's go back to our nuts and bolts and I got all my oil pan stuff in here. You want to start from your middle and work your way out. 